discussion on fast Fourier transform. It's a very complex uh, numerical algorithm. We can choose to get hung up on that. We'll uh, quickly uh, get in uh, over our pay grade and uh, offer not. So I'd rather choose that uh, since we're hands-on kind of people, we're going to take a very hands-on approach to FFT. Very few things are more hands-on than a lawnmower. I'm going to use it as a prop to drive the uh, message home. So here's how we're accustomed to looking at a waveform. We have the amplitude on the vertical scale and we have time on the horizontal scale. And in that fashion, a uh, sine wave makes sense to us. We recognize it immediately. What a fast Fourier transform does is that it provides a new way to look at it. So let's have this over here. And now instead of having the horizontal being a time, it is a frequency. So the transformation is from what we're accustomed to seeing amplitude over time now we'll have amplitude over frequency. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. And what we can tell is that there's a peak at 10 Hertz. If we go back to the uh, scope mode and the way we're familiar to looking at it, if we draw a couple of uh, cursors we will find that that is also 10 hertz. So, you know, a big fat hairy deal. We already could determine with just a couple of cursors on that sine wave that it was 10 hertz. Why go through this FFT uh, to get the frequency? That's because there's only one wave here. There's only one sine wave. So it's very simple. What if you had a complex waveform where you can't seem to find a period, you have many components, many waves that interact with each other and all it is is like a soup, like a mess. I'm going to show you such a mess right here. So here's a more complex waveform where there are probably uh, many different frequencies that are interacting with each other, many components that end up making this. You know, that's not Ferrari, that's a small utility engine, pretty good one, but you know, it's still just a utility engine. Uh, it's driving a uh, blade, who knows how well balanced that may be. Um, the housing can get excited, it's going to have a natural frequency of its own, it's going to show up and the uh, stethoscope is uh, quite uh, sensitive, it picks everything up. There might be half a dozen different things going on here and they're all interacting with each other, producing a wave that uh, to the eye is a little bit uh, difficult for us to uh, interpret and uh, maybe not able to derive uh, the information that we want from it. Let's do the very same thing using FFT. So what FFT has been able to do for us here is that it's taken that uh, complex waveform that we're looking at in scope mode and it has been able to, uh, from that mess, separate all the, the components that made that waveform and display it 
on a frequency line instead of a time line. And now um, we see the amplitude of each one of those waves at their frequencies. And now it's starting to get useful. I'm focused on one particular frequency in here, and that's 50 Hertz. Uh, why so? Uh, the lawnmower runs at 3000 RPM. Not just mine, but uh, just about all lawnmowers. The, uh, there's regulation that uh, says that the uh, tip speed of the lawnmower blade cannot exceed 19,000 feet per minute. And for most uh, blade lengths, that works out to about 3000 RPM. So if you take 3000 RPM divided by 60, that's 50 and 50 hertz. So you get 50 cycles per second, it's 3,000 per minute. And uh, it's the highest peak uh, of the bunch here. And uh, so what's, what could be responsible for that, right? Uh, amongst all the other vibrations that are going on, but right at that particular frequency, well, that's the lawnmower blade. And we have to suspect from this information that FFT was able to provide that the lawnmower blade is not as well balanced as it should be. So I've shown you what FFT can do, how it can be of use. The next video you don't want to miss is going to be how we're going to correct this lawnmower blade. It's a good one. See you guys later.